you talked about uh, how you weren't even sure that you wanted to write a book about, about your own life. What changed your mind? It took me about five years to really get started. And I'm very happy because I'll tell you why. Uh, it also tells about my time in a service. Right. And that to me uh, is pretty precious and it still is, always will be. For the simple reason that it made a man out of me and, uh, and I learned an awful lot from my shipmates, from uh, people I met and everything else. And I learned about my fellow man. You know, you never forget your old buddies. I, I've still got buddies that I still uh, have from the, the old first ship I was ever on, the USS Lamberton. And it was an old destroyer. And I tell you, old four stacker. And I'm pretty proud of that sucker. I tell you, she was a, she was a great ship. I met some wonderful captains. I met some wonderful people. And I must say, uh, in those days, the times were hard. You they didn't have very many rates open, and uh, I, I, I played as long as I could on the deck. As, uh, but I wanted a rate to get started, get off the deck for us, you know? Yep. And then somebody came up and said, listen, we, we need a, an apprentice for a gunner's mate, you know? Would you like to try? Sure, anything. So I became a gunner's mate. And I ended up, after World War II, I ended up as gunner's mate first class. Why do you think that young people today should think about military service as part of their overall life plan. First of all, I'd like to say this, that I think it's the worst thing in the world that we ever did. They took away the, the compulsory end of it, uh, where you have to serve at least two years, you know? Yeah. But look what that two years does to a young man. I mean, it brightens him up. He learns about his fellow man. He learns a trade. And the first thing you know, you're, you're, you've, got, you've got a career coming. Everyone in, in the... In the who becomes 18 years of age should go to see and learn a few things about what your country is made of, what and the people that you work with, and the and the things that you do, and uh, the mystery of of the sea. What more could you possibly ask? Sure. This is what your country is doing for you too, for what you're doing for your country. You've been very involved in with the Navy Memorial and outreach to veterans and things like that. Why do you, what drives you for that? Just because it's part Navy, I guess. I think it, you, give, you pay back a little bit, you know, after the good years of, of, of things that they've done for me. And this is, you look back now in these things, and this is what grabs you. You become proud. You become part of that, not only the ship, but the Navy. Who suggested that you go into acting? <laughs> I came home after 10 years in the service, and I, I, I you know, I, I, I was home for a couple of weeks, and my mother one day looked at me, she said, well, <laughs> what are those kind of wells of, you're going to get, you're going to find work, or what are you going to do? And out of a clear blue sky, she said, have you ever thought of becoming an actor? She says, you always like to make a darn fool of yourself in front of people. Why don't you give it a try? And I looked up, and I saw that golden light come down, and I said, Mom, that's what I'm going to be. And 10 years later, I was handed an Academy Award. That's unbelievable. It's crazy. And I, I always say, hey, man, you want a career? Start in the Navy. Uh, actually, I used... Uh, uh, one of my old shipmates as uh, the character that I played in From Here to Eternity. <laughs> Did you really? <laughs> sure. <laughs> wow. His name was Claude Andrew Babcock. I'll never forget. And when his cigar was down like this, everything was fine. But boy, when it was up there, woof, watch out. Fire is <laughs> fire in the hole, you know? What's it like working with Tim Conway? <laughs> Well, I tell you, uh, the very first time I ever met Tim, they said, okay, we got this, this thing, fella coming in here, we're going to do this scene. And a lot, around the bend came Tim Conway holding onto this line, you know, in the boat. And suddenly the boat stopped, and Tim kept right on going right into the drink. And that was my first introduction to my executive officer. <laughs> That's brilliant. Oh, I tell you. How much did being, being in the Navy influence what you did on McHale's Navy? Everything. 
everything. And of course, the other kids didn't know it, you know, and so I, I taught them all as we went along. I said, show respect, you know, you, the kids are, stand up to attention, let them, you know, let them know who you are. And so it, it happened, you know, and uh, it, it worked fine. So a couple of years went by, and I get a call to report to the Pentagon for the uh, Secretary of the Navy, Warner, Mr. Warner at the time. And I went, I said, sir, to what do I owe this honor? He said, we just want to tell you that you're the greatest recruiter that we've ever had in the service. <laughs> and I tell you, we, we did all kinds, we pulled all kinds of stuff. But it was always with that wonderful kind of feeling of, you know, respect. You are still active out there working, engaging people like you did, like you did here. Why not? This is what keeps me young, I think. And uh, I happen to be 91 years old right now. A lot of people don't think so. But uh, at 91, I figure this, that I've got about, I'm going to go to about 113 if I possibly can. Knock wood. <laughs> but, um, and then after that, I tell them all to, you know, take a jump because uh, I, I'll call it quits. But I'd like to go to that point because of the fact that it's invigorating. It's, it's, it's something to do. It's a challenge. And uh, by golly, I'm going to give it a try.